This is Mary Sue Lanigan with the Michigan Parkinson Foundation. I am going to know that um, I'm going to that we have with Henry Ford Health System Home Care. I'm going to mute all of you now so that we don't hear any of the background um, noise. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think you can hear me, right? Mary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. I am going to mute myself now. So I give you all um, Bridget Daly. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Mary Sue. Hi, everyone. I wish I could see you instead of me up in the top corner here. But um, I'm very excited to talk with you about strategies for managing activities of daily living. Uh, I am an occupational therapist uh, by training and I've been an OT for 25 years. My favorite area of work is in home care and I also have an uncle with Parkinson's and this is one of the reasons that I've become more interested in it, have become certified in an LSVT big therapy for people with Parkinson's, and I think the most exciting thing to me, no matter who I work with, is that most people want to be independent. They want to do for themselves. And so my goal today is just to give people ideas for independence, and hopefully you will share with me other things because I tell everyone, I learn something from everyone I work with. So I'm looking forward to this tonight. And I guess I'll just start it off with, um, in order for us to be able to do activities, we have to wake up our arms and our legs and our feet and our hands. And I know that when we have Parkinson's, everyone talks about exercise, exercise. And so I think the most important thing people can do before they take on an activity, being it getting dressed, going over to the bathroom, is make big movements, make your arms big, make your legs big, because if the body is moving slowly or very small, it's gonna be very difficult to get your arms through shirts, your pants over your feet. So make big movements. So I think the first thing I think about when we talk about activities of daily living is eating. That should be an enjoyable activity. Hopefully you have someone to socialize with and enjoy the meal. The hardest thing, and I think people get distracted, is they worry about, am I holding this spoon or this fork? And is the drink going to spill? And so some ideas out there is to maybe change the way that the food is being delivered. So if you have plates with edges, um, if you even change it to a bowl, sometimes even like plates from dollar stores that have the divided plates, because things don't have to be expensive. Most people um, with Parkinson's, it's not an isolating diagnosis. There's arthritis, there's pain, there can be a stroke in there. So there's different ways to make tools more manageable by building up the handles. And quick ways to do that is the PVC pipe at the hardware stores that you encase your pipes in the basement with. You can buy a big long piece for a dollar. So you don't have to buy fancy um, foam. You can use tape. But there are products out there and I wanted to put in some pictures of built up handles cups with lids. And I think the other thing that I see that gets frustrating is, you know, families and friends say, oh, here's a straw. Well, if you're trying to take a drink and the straw is rolling around, that can be very frustrating too. So if the straw is stable in the cup, that can make things much more easy. Um, the bent 
silverware. Um, a lot of times when I'm working with people, if they don't mind me taking their silverware and bending it, then I'll use tables and other hard surfaces to create these angles. Um, knives, a pizza cutter. That can be a fabulous knife because then you can just roll it back and forth and there's a constant blade. Um, a lot of times positioning. So there will be tremors and people are talking about, oh, the food is going everywhere. So a quick way I'll say is, all right, the first thing I can think about is to put your elbow on the table, create stability, and then try eating. Sometimes that helps. Other times it helps a little. Then we could say, all right, if you've got a one pound wrist weight, you can find them at local, oh gosh, Targets, Walmarts, in the exercise department. Put a little weight in your arm, that may counteract some of the tremor. So those are just quick, cost-effective ways to try for reduction in tremor. However, there is a product and it's called Liftware Steady. And in this video, I've provided you the link with the product, but also this YouTube video, I think says it all. And this will come with a fork um, tip, a spoon tip, different sizes of spoons. So I wanted just to show this video to you. It's amazing. Mealtime brings people together. It's more than a time for nourishing the body. We nourish our spirit and our relationships. But tremor, whether from essential tremor or Parkinson's disease, um, the way uh, Bridget, we're not yes. seeing the video. We can hear it, but we don't see it. Oh, you can't see it. All right, let me see if I can. All right, hold the phone here. Thank you for saying that. Let me try to get back into the Zoom. Ooh. I wonder ah. if I lost. Now it looks like I'm on a Zoom page, but let me try this. That's interesting because I clicked the link and then I left Zoom, even though you can hear me. Maybe you have to share it. That's what I'm, I'm going to look and see. Screen you are sharing. Okay, let's try this then. I'm trying to get back in to Zoom because now that link is not showing my PowerPoint. So let's your pow see. We can see your PowerPoint. Isn't that okay? We right. see you and we see your PowerPoint. All right, interesting. I don't see that. I'm on a blank screen. So let's go. Mute. Okay. I'm that is interesting. All right. Do do. Not. All right. I may have to re-enter this meeting because right now there. Um. Let me try to minimize this. Okay. So I'm back to the PowerPoint. All right. So give me just a second here. All right. Now. You're, it says I'm sharing a screen, so do you know then what's happening, Mary Sue, when I click on the YouTube link, why it's not showing that screen? Is there another piece that I have to click on? I don't know. Let me try it. <laughs> um, Video. That won't let me. It won't. Sometimes on Zoom, the YouTube links have to be downloaded onto your own computer. Okay, and so that's all right. I can find. What are you gonna get? I wonder if I can the escape this. Pillar. And let me try going to this and this. Are you still seeing the internet now? We're not seeing the internet. We're seeing your slide and we're seeing you. But what you might want to do is copy that address and then um, put it in the internet and go back to stop the share with the PowerPoint. And then you got to share the video, I think. 
All right. So I've got it. We haven't done, I haven't done this before. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, all right. So I will do stop the share and then I will go to the internet. I can come in here closer. All right. Well, it doesn't make a difference. It might be easier. Now, are you seeing the internet just, or no? No, we just see you. You have to hit share. Once you get to the internet, you're going to have to hit share. All right. Back in the meeting? Because there's no share button um, on the try, internet. Let me try something really quick. Okay. Um, hmm. Full screen theater mode. Okay. All right. Now I wanna. Um, now I'm out of the. I'm out of the Zoom. All right. I'm sorry. That's okay. I. Was, that's why I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. Um, if, you know what we'll do? We'll send a video link in an email to everybody so they can view it on their own. How about that? All right. Um, I can't do it right now. I have to do it after the meeting's over with so I can pull down all their emails, okay? Okay. All right. I just feel bad only because this video is so good. Um, are you back to seeing my full slide? Um, go here. Go back to. Um, oh, I have to share the screen again, and I'm not. Yeah, gonna you got to share the screen exactly. All right, and so now the drop down is gone. So, dee dee dee. Let's see if I can find that again. You, you don't see share screen at the bottom, I'm next to the back. chat. Yep, coming back. All right. All right. Um, ooh, hang on a second. I just found this. Are you guys seeing that? Yes. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Okay. Yes. I have no idea how I just did this, but all of a sudden okay. it looked like you guys were going to see this. All right. Okay. All right. So let me play this brings people together. for you. Here it goes. And the nourishing the body. We nourish our spirit and our relationships. But tremor, whether from a And so you can see, obviously, how the person is struggling with regular silverware. Instead on the basic task of eating. We decided to create something that would allow people to go out to restaurants or simply enjoy a meal without stress. We invented the lift bar stabilizer to make it easier to eat with hand tremor and take the frustration out of eating. For the first time, we have the technology to actively stabilize the utensil in a device so small it fits in your hand. The lift bar device works by sensing a person's tremor and intelligently stabilizing itself to make the food's journey from the plate to the mouth much easier. Liftware is designed to be a part of your life. The device is small and portable so that you can easily take it with you when you go out to eat. It's comfortable and effective because Liftware allows the hand to shake while the cancellation technology and the handle stabilizes the spoon. In a clinical trial, we measured an average of 70% reduction in spoon tremor and individuals with essential tremor during three different eating-related tasks. It's easy to clean and holds a charge for several meals, so you can place it in the charging cradle whenever is convenient. We are proud to offer a product that allows people to take control of the tremor. When you eat with liftware, your tremor retreats into the background of the meal so you can focus on the best parts of dining, the food you're eating, and the people you're eating with. We can't wait to bring liftware to your life. Okay, now let me see if I am smart enough to get back Simple tasks like into, brushing our uh -oh. teeth, taking a shower, right. and eating are part of our everyday routine. All right. Now. You want to share your PowerPoint again? I'm working on it. I'm trying to figure out which Zoom I'm in here because it looks like I've got a bunch of them up. All right, now you, okay, here we go. We can see you. All right, and then it says you are sharing screen, but I must not be. Yeah. All right. Wow. Oh. All right, well. Here, do you want me to? 
Yeah, I think you're going to have to go in. Okay. Sorry about that. All right, perfect. Thanks. All right. And then we were like on slide five. Yeah. All right. Okay. Wait a minute. I want to do this from beginning. Uh, slideshow. Here's where we were. Like All right. One. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So um, I really like that liftware, and I just wanted people to know that there is something out there that um, is more. Um, Oh, high tech, I guess, than some of the other strategies uh, to try because it does cost, I think, about $195 for the liftware. Um, so, anyway, moving on to grooming, again, people can have all kinds of issues as far as difficulty reaching areas. So, they do make long handled combs and brushes, uh, long handled razors. Um, again, if you're having difficulty with tremors, you can again try stabilizing your elbow on the sink. You can try using that wrist weight just to try to stop some of that so you don't end up jabbing yourself in the cheek. Um, and then Mary Sue, are you ready to yep. dress me? And then bathing. For bathing, I know some of the issues can be getting in and out of that tub shower combination being able to direct the water, reach your feet. And so one of the things I just wanted to point out was they have the shower chairs that are the white uh, with the gray handles. And one thing that I like about those is they can be in three components where it can be just the seat or you can add the back and or you can add the arms. So again, you have choices if you're not sure you need something to uh, invasive at the time. They also have the long tub benches on the right where you see the lady in the white bathrobe where a little bit of the seats on the outside and some of the seat is on the inside so that you can actually sit down, swing your legs over and scoot into the tub to take away the stepping. Um, if a lot of that seems to be too much uh, motor components, the blue chair and there's a lot of varieties of these out there, but the blue chair, it will swivel so that you can sit down and the seat itself moves. So it will slide in and out of the tub instead of the person having to physically scoot across a bench. And then the bottom picture on the right, that's a tub cut where, again, if you're trying to have less of a a barrier to step over, you can have tub cuts put in by different vendors. And when you're taking your shower, again, a long handle shower hose can be very helpful so you can direct the water. Again, the long handle shower hoses, they're either hanging down and not spraying on you, or they're just raining down. So if you can get a suction cup shower hose holder, you can put it down lower so that you can reach that. And then please, please just remember about bath mats for the tub or shower floor, as well as the bathroom floor so that you don't end up slipping and sliding on soap. Um, and then of course, keep everything close to you so you don't have to do a lot of twisting and turning in the shower. Um, and then reaching your feet. Of course, there are long handle bath sponges, but they also make those suction cup um, little foot brushes that you can then stick your foot in and pull the foot back and forth. So there's a lot of different ways to accomplish a task. And I guess I like to think of, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat type of scenario. So whatever is important to someone, we want to figure out strategies to make it happen. Um, and then I think, Mary Beth, the slide moves on to toileting. This is another video that I would love to try to figure out if I could show you. Um, this is a tool. It's called the Freedom Wand, and there's three pieces to it. So it can be short to much longer, and it can hold razors, loofahs, it can hold toilet paper. 
So again, if you're having difficulty reaching certain areas, you've got a little bit longer of a hand. Um, and Mary, see, there's probably not a way for us to show that video, is there? No? Must not be. Okay. Um, yes. So check it out. See it uh, when Mary Sue sends you it because it's again another fabulous tool for people with back pain that can't reach, might be carrying some extra weight with them. Um, I've even had people using it where instead of holding toilet paper, they're using a wet wipe on the end of it. Um, I've had other people who want to use a washcloth. It can hold different things. So again, it's a fabulous opportunity. And then our next slide. And again, using the toilet. There are so many options. People always think of an elevated toilet seat as something on the far left. And absolutely, that is the bare bones, basic elevated toilet seat. Some people hate the look of that. And so I'm saying, all right, there's a lot of other opportunities. They do make risers, like in the bottom picture on the left, that will go between the toilet seat and the porcelain bowl. That riser can also have the armrests like you see in that picture. And then the top picture, um, where the red arrow is. That's called a toilet vader, <laughs> where actually your entire current toilet, you have a plumber come in, they take off the toilet, they put that riser over the structure in the floor and set the toilet on top. So that's another way to create a taller toilet, because even the comfort height toilets, depending on a person's height, still may not be tall enough for someone to get up. Um, and then they're simply just adding handrails to a toilet. And two things to think about is the space that you're working in, because there's the legs or the handrails with legs that go to the floor. In many bathrooms, if they're small, that can just be a trip hazard or another obstacle to try to step around with you, your cane, a walker. Whereas the picture on the bottom right, those are just handles like arms on a chair where they do not go to the floor. That is one solid unit and that's at um, Lowe's, Home Depot, everything here is on Amazon. That can be your best friend. So there's some different ways to access the bathroom then for showering, um, accessing the toilet and completing hygiene. So I think our next slide takes us into maybe dressing. Yes, good. Um, dressing, I think, can be frustrating for a lot of people, especially getting your hands and fingers to do things. So I think one of the first things I just want to say to people is open and close those hands really big a few times to wake up those muscles in that hand before you start asking it to do a task. So in shoes, if shoelaces are super frustrating, they do make elastic shoelaces. They come in a rainbow of colors these days. And I just wanted to show that picture because they look like shoelaces. So no one knows they're elastic and they work just like elastic waistband pants where when you're pushing your foot into the shoe, it expands open and then when your foot's in, it closes back down. They should never have to be tied or untied. Uh, same things with buttons on shirts. There's a lot of clever ways that they're coming up for this now. Um, of course, you can always try to pre-button something when it's not on you, if that is easier. Other ways is to use magnets or Velcro. And they are making magnetic shirts now. And that's the shirt on the left, where it's built right into the shirt and you just fold it across. Velcro is again a best friend because you can put a long Velcro strip of hook and loop down the backs of the shirts and just fold them across. Button hooks are in the bottom picture and that is 
exactly what it sounds like. It's got a wire on it that you stick through the hole, grab the button, and pull it back through the shirt. So again, there's different ways to handle things. And I guess for the ladies out there, I just want you to know too, they're making magnetic earrings. So again, the front and back are magnets. So you just touch them to your ears. Um, sock aids, that top left picture, reaching your feet for many people can be very difficult. So there's a tool, um, it's a hard white plastic, it's got ropes. You literally put the sock on it while it's sitting in your lap, you drop it down to your foot, holding those cords, pull it over your foot. So there's so many ways to do things. And then um, Mary Sue, would you advance to the next slide? Um, medication. I'm just thinking about, you know, trying to remember to take medication and did you take it all? A lot of times what I'll do with people is I'll create a list based on the time of day. That way, if it's 8 a.m. and you take your blood pressure medicine and anxiety medicine, you take your carbolevodopa medicine, we put down the time and list all the medicines, and then we can use the pill box. Um, however, a lot of times people are not remembering to take the pill, even though the pills are all organized. So that clock right in the center that says Med Center Talking Alarm Clock, I actually use that with my mom. Uh, she does not have Parkinson's, she has a little bit of memory loss. And you can program that up to four times a day and it can have a person's voice saying, hey, good morning, it's you know, August 24th, 6 p.m., it's time to take your medicine. And it will talk to you until you physically hit the stop button. Um, or it can just beep. So there's ways to give yourself memory reminders. Um, also, automatic pill dispensers, where even on Amazon, they're here. They're, they have a key, so they can be pre-filled for about a month, and the pills will spit out at the designated time. So if there's no pill, then either the person took it, because, or they threw them out, but um, there will become, come out at the right time for you. Um, and then the last thing now that's is out are pre-filled pill packets. And that's in the top right corner where a pharmacy puts all the medicine in a packet for you and the packet has to be opened. So again, if opening is difficult, there may be scissors that you need to use and there's all different kinds and styles of scissors besides the traditional um, put your fingers and thumb in. Um, all right, so Mary Sue, I think the next slide. Mobility, oh, I'm frustrated when I look at this because that you step walker, I wanted to show you this video. Um, I'll come to that in a minute, but when you look at the walkers, the top two, they're the traditional walkers where you have the two wheels in the front, tennis balls or walker skis in the back. The one thing where the red arrow is, I just wanted you to notice that the walker wheel is on the outside of the walker frame. Most walkers, those wheels can easily be put on the inside of the frame. And the reason that I'm um, attuned to that is because in the area that I work, our houses are real small. <laughs> so we're trying to save space wherever we can so people can fit through doorways and hallways. So that will give people about another four inches of clearance if we can move it to the inside. Um, the walker on the top right is the traditional four-wheel rollator where you have a seat in a basket. Um, and then the one on the bottom, that is the U-step. Um, the video, gosh, I'm just frustrated that I cannot show you this video. Um, the U-step walkers, I have used them twice with people in home care. And my experience with the use step, and I'm wondering if it's been redesigned because when I look at the video, I think to myself, hmm, I don't remember it being that compact. The reason I'm saying that again is in our smaller homes, that base can be wide. 
And I noticed that a lot of times when people were getting to like a kitchen doorway or a bathroom doorway or a bedroom doorway, they really weren't fitting through the doorway well with the use steps that I had used. So it looks like in the video, they're saying that, you know, they're only a 22 inch wide base. I'm not sure about that. So I think I would say before anyone invests in a use step, is make sure it's gonna fit in your home. Um, a couple things about the use step that can be very nice is there's two features on there. There's one with like um, a beam of light, but in front of the wheels at the back two wheels. So it flashes to cue you to step towards that um, target because a lot of times with the Parkinson's, we have those slow, small steps. So there's a target for the person to aim for. They also have a um, kind of like a metronome on it as a beep so that instead of the light or in addition to, you can have a sound that will cue that walking pace. Uh, these are very expensive walkers and that kind of brings me to insurance. Generally, insurance will only cover a walker um, every in five year increments. So if it hasn't been five years, then a person is generally paying out of pocket if they need to obtain another walker. The only reason that might not be true is if a medical diagnosis changes. Maybe someone had a stroke. So therefore, there's a need for a new walker. Um, insurance will cover the repairs for equipment until the lifetime, generally five years, is up. Um, so I just kind of wanted to draw people's attention to some of these things. And um, I've seen the use steps, I've used them. And the one time that it was successful, I was in a, in a larger home and it made it through some of the spaces. Um, all right, Mary Sue, I think I can move on. So transportation. I think about this because anytime I'm working with anyone, it doesn't always have to be Parkinson's, is driving. Driving always comes up as, is this person safe to drive? Should they be driving? And there are driving rehabilitation specialists. They're certified. And I included this internet um, website so that you could kind of read about them. Generally, the certified driving rehab specialists are occupational therapists. They um, have specialized and they have certification in this. When they do an assessment to determine if someone is you know, able to be on the road safely, it's three hours long. So they are looking at everything from your cognition to your mobility, to your vision, to your range of motion. And then there's about 45 minutes of a road component. And generally this is not covered by insurance. This would be an out of pocket cost. It is not cheap. It's about four to $500. Um, if the person doesn't pass, the facility generally has retraining and one of the locations that I have checked out, their retraining class, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, is $165 a session. So now it might be well worth it to someone to maintain their driving uh, driver's license. They're also making recommendations, you know, adapted mirrors, maybe bigger, um, so the person has a difficult time turning their head, it's covering more ground. Everyone wants to know, hey, where do the results of this driving test go? So the results are sent to the physician who ordered the test and it is given to the client who is paying for the test. So it is not sent to the Secretary of State. So that is always a big question. Um, there, that doesn't go forward. Now, Secretary of State can be contacted by a family member, a neighbor. They may say, wow, I don't think this person is safe to drive. And it doesn't have to be a person with Parkinson's. It can be any citizen. 
they may have seen unsafe driving uh, maneuvers. What happens then is the Secretary of State sends a letter to the person and says that there has been a uh, question about their, their safe driving and they need to come in for a test. And at that point in time, the Secretary of State, if they bring the person in to test, they could take a license away if the person doesn't pass. So I always think about driving for people and, you know, life is one big change and decisions. I always say, you know, when you're single, you do one set of things. When you get married, you have to make a change. When you have kids, you have to make a change. So again, driving may be something that someone decides on their own. I'm not, I'm not gonna continue and I need to have an alternative. So Ubers, taxis, uh, the city buses, uh, communities many times, the community centers will offer the senior transportation vans, maybe for a dollar, and they'll go within a certain mile radius of someone's town. Um, and then of course, there's the private medical transportation companies that will pick people up, especially if a wheelchair is necessary for that person's mobility. Um, all right, Mary Sue, I think I'm ready for the next slide. So speech, um, a lot of times people with Parkinson's, they are, you know, people are saying, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. So of course, the first thing we wanna do is try to remedy anything that we can fix. So certain therapies can be very helpful, such as LSVT Loud. A speech therapist is your best option to help figure out your voice. Now, there is some equipment out there um, that will amplify your voice. So a couple of them I just listed there, the Chatterbox and simply using what a teacher uses in a classroom. It doesn't mean you have to wear it all the time, but I know that sometimes when people go to order some food at a restaurant, they get nervous because then they say they can't be heard. So sometimes this could be a strategy that people choose to use when they feel like they need their voice to be heard. Um, all right, I think the next slide. And then just a couple other pieces of information is um, an orientation clock. This is great. I use this with so many people because it's a nice big clock. It can sit right on a counter and it tells you the day, the month, the year, the time. It doesn't talk to you. It just has that visual orientation. Also the CapTel phone. A lot of times, again, Parkinson's isn't the only diagnosis people are dealing with. If someone is hard of hearing, this can be an excellent resource. And the CapTel um, website is there because a lot of times they have a free service for someone who qualifies with a hearing impairment. And they'll need documentation from a physician, an audiologist, but it's a great way to keep family communicating and friends communicating with people who are have hearing issues. Um, so I guess the biggest thing is I just feel like there is so much out there for people to keep doing things that are important to them. And it doesn't just have to be, can I get dressed? There's so much more to life than, than just getting your socks on. Um, all right, Mary Sue, I think, do I have, oh yes, my slide. Everything that I've talked about here today can be found on Amazon. Um, again, that is the most cost-effective place that I have found to obtain these items. Some of them are in local pharmacies um, and hardware stores. It doesn't hurt to check and it's easy to return there. And then if you are looking for other vendors online, there's some reputable vendors out there that um, you know, I've worked with, I've used their products and I thought, all right, I'm just gonna include them here so that if you don't use Amazon or aren't comfortable, there's phone numbers here where you can actually call a business and, and order things that way. And most importantly, occupational therapists should be your go-to person to help you figure out how to manage daily life. And daily life can be anything. It can be gardening, driving, laundry. So, 
look for them, ask them to help you. And uh, any therapist should be willing to research and figure it out. And the first answer should never be, well, I guess you can't do that anymore, or you better give that up. No, there's always a way. Now, eventually things may change. You may have to do differently, but I'm, I'm all for trying to figure out a way to get things done. So um, I think I've concluded. And on my last slide here, I was kind of hoping to hear, um, I think there's one more slide, Mary Sue. Yeah, I wanna hear from everybody out there, what have you found? What tips and tricks do you have? Because I wanna be able to share that with people that I work with. All right, hang on. I'm going to unmute everybody, okay? And we're gonna stop the share right now. Hang on. Right, let's see. Good, I can see people. Yeah, now you can see everybody. Um, all of you, you can unmute yourselves. Um, I'm, I'm going through, I have to do it one at a time. Okay. And if there's questions or something I didn't touch on that you want to ask, and I see so many people I recognize and know. I'm so happy. Bridget. Hi, uh, Bruce. Hi. Bruce. <laughs> Bridget? Yes. Hi, it's so pretty. Hi, um, Sue. How are you, dear? Good. How are you? Fine, thank you. I wanted to ask you about that um, that tall walker. Is that the one I've seen where you can put like your elbows on it, kind of your arms, and you walk more upright? Or is that a different kind? That's, um, I think, a different kind. Are you thinking about the ones that have like a cup and a platform for your forearms to rest on? I saw some pictures of. I'm, I'm not looking for anything right now, but I just I saw that and it kind of interested me. And I wondered if this Utah thing was. Um, the U step, yes. The U step does not have any place that you rest your forearms. You still hold it with your hands. The positioning of the handles tend to be a little bit more ergonomic to get you a little bit more upright than a traditional walker. That's what I like with the, uh, the one that I saw the pictures of, is you were standing up looking kind of straight ahead rather than yes. forward and down. You know, yes. Bent. And a lot of times too, um, I try to, anyone who uses a walker, I always, I see a lot of them leaning forward to use it. And so, Again, I'm always saying, think of this as a shopping cart. You know, you're not using this to hold you up. You're kind of using this as a way to keep your balance. So it should be close to you. Um, Bridget, I have a question. Um, I've had a few calls from people who took a bath. They got into the bathtub but then they couldn't get out. Yep. Or, yeah. Either they had an off episode or like a freezing moment. Um, they got weak, I'm not sure, but they actually had to have the fire department um, come and get them out. Yeah. Is there anything, should they just not take baths, stick to showers? Um, yeah, I was just going to say now at that point in time, I guess baths in the bottom of the tub would not be recommended anymore. To me, that okay. would be the time that, all right, it's time to do something differently where yes, I can still get in my tub shower, but down. If, if you can't get off the ground, you, you can't rely on getting out of the tub. So, okay. Yeah, there, that is, that has always been, the hardest because I will still work with people that want to say I just want to take a bath yeah and I'm like well then then we need to have somebody here that can give you that hand in case you are having that off episode yeah okay um another question kind of along the same lines um this is more for the caregiver um so say the person with Parkinson's just falls in the house they're they're not they don't feel like they're hurt but they can't get up are there any kind of like can you talk about those like steps or those yes that yes that the caregiver can bring over and help them kind of stair step up 
That is an excellent question. And I'm so sorry I didn't touch on falls. I had so many things in my brain that I thought, I've got to throw out there. Yeah. Yes, when a person falls, I would be looking for a very sturdy chair with arms that you can bring over to give, and you might have to sit on it <laughs> if it's not, you know, solid, or back it up against a wall to give them something to hold on to. If that person is able, if they're not hurt, of course, if they can crawl over to the couch, the dining room table, to have something to pull on in order to help them get up. And if that person has, when I say pants on, the caregiver can be holding like the belt, which is more secure than just clothing to put around their hips and give them a help up. Um, if the person, if they do have a low surface, now sometimes I've been in homes where they could have a footstool. So then maybe we have the person sit on their butt and we have the footstool like up against the wall and we can have them get up that six inches onto a footstool and they're sitting. So then we bring over the next surface and get them up onto the kitchen chair. That's another way to slowly get someone up off the floor too, on their okay. butt that is. Okay, great, great suggestion, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody else, if you have a question, go ahead and un unmute yourself. It's the little um, icon that looks like a microphone and it'll have a line through it. I see that about half of you unmute it. So if you do have a question, just unmute yourself. In the meantime, um, does anyone else have another question? Hey, Bridget, this is Bruce. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. I was just going to mention when it comes to getting up, uh, my wife got a uh, kind of a U-shaped, it's, it's got folding arms. It's, a, it's basically a gardening thing. Yes. Uh, you, it's if in one position you can kneel on it to do your gardening work, and then you can turn it upside down, and then it's got a surface that you can kind of get up off of the floor with, or sit on, or whatever. So uh, that look, is excellent, Bruce. Uh, she might she got it on Amazon. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, you didn't mention a back brush. We both use a bath bath a back brush in the bath in the shower. The long handle bath sponge. Yeah, it's great. Oh, it, is, it feels great too, you know, besides getting you clean. So, exactly. Target, Walmart, Myers, all in that bathing section. And for people that want to scrub between their toes, you can also get a long handle toe brush and it's shaped like a little sponge triangle and it can get in between your toes. And if you wanna be cost effective, like my 95 year old lady, she told me that was absolutely ridiculous. All she needs to do is get her washcloth soapy, drop it over her toes and use her kitchen spatula and push it in between her toes. She did not need to pay for that. And I said, you know what? You are absolutely right. You do not need to pay for that. Okay, and another, any other questions or comments, suggestions? Well, great ideas, Bridget. I like the eating ones, especially just, uh, you know, the weighted. Yeah, and there are so many tips and tricks, and I just think, Try not to get frustrated. You call your doctor and you ask for a referral for occupational therapy. If you can get to outpatient, go to outpatient. If you are homebound, ask for them to come to the house. I mean, there are so many ways to do something. And I'm constantly challenged to think of other ways. Okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to say is we'll get these two videos that um, we were not able to tonight and Bridget's presentation, and I will email it out to all of you. I can't do it while we're on this call because I have to download your emails afterwards, okay? 
And I'm so sorry, because I wasn't sure it would work. And I kept thinking, now, how are they going to be able to see this? So that was me not I knowing. I didn't realize you had videos in your presentation. I just kind of looked through it really quick, looked at the information. I didn't realize those were links to videos. And yeah, that's why I said know. it early, saying, OK, how do I do this? Oh, OK. I'm sorry I missed that. That's OK. Um, do we have any other questions? I just wanted to ask, uh, this is Bruce again, do you know if uh, you can repeat or get a, a brush up session on things like the LSVT loud or anything after a year or two? Yeah. Good question, Bruce. Thank you. If you have done um, therapy and it, it doesn't have to be one and done because think of therapy for people with Parkinson's like someone who goes to the dentist. We all go to the dentist twice a year, right? Because they got to check our teeth. So when you have Parkinson's, definitely you should be able to get tune-ups. If you notice yourself slipping at all and how you're functioning, walking, moving, get back to the doc, ask for that therapy tune-up. And don't be told, oh, well, you know, can't do it. Yes, you can. And you need to have creative therapists who are willing to say, yeah, we can bring you in. Um, along those lines, Bruce, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but <clears throat> we are offering um, the Parkinson exercise class, which is kind of like um, the big program, kind of a more advanced, the second phase of that. We are offering that five days a week, at two week at Monday through Friday. We have three days of power moves for Parkinson and two days of yoga. It's free, it's, um, we're doing it via Zoom. Um, the Power Moves class is taught by uh, physical therapists who are trained in Parkinson. And um, I can send that link. If you don't already know about it, I'll send you the link, okay? Okay, any other questions? Well, I think we're good then. <laughs> thank you for having me because Bridget, I just thank feel you. there's so much out there. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, we had a good crowd tonight. Um, I appreciate you doing this. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. Again, I'll get that email out first thing in the morning. Um, we'll send you the PowerPoint and the two videos. And um, I say good night. All right. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bridget, say hi to Tim. I will. Thanks, Sue. You say hi to your husband, too. I will, honey. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great presentation, Bridget and Mary Sue. <laughs> Thank you, Gary.